Hey everybody, um, what's up? Um, doing this video really, really quick um, to kind of explain my current behavior um, as well as my future behavior. Um, so oftentimes I feel that people can only respond to you, um, support you, or even judge you based off what you give them. Um, and so if you don't give people what's going on, um, you can't expect the proper support. You can't um, expect the proper reaction. And you can't get mad at the um, impending judgment. <clears throat> so... I'm doing this to kind of uh, explain it all, but I've been off the grid um, for a little bit of a week now, and I haven't answered anyone's phone calls or anyone's text messages, um, and I disabled my social media, which is probably the most alarming to some people, um, and a lot of people have called repeatedly, sent text. Um, a few people actually sent police to my house just to make sure I was okay. So for all of you that have been concerned, um, thank you. Um, but sometimes in life, um, everything seems to come to um, a halt and everything kinds of boils at the same time. And as a person who deals with mental illness, I have to be very smart and um, very uh, mindful of how I react to things and situations in order to keep myself sane and safe. So um, I just needed to back away and not talk to anyone or speak to anyone and because I just needed to hear only my voice and God's voice. And that's it. Um, but I know that a lot of people say that a business owner like myself or someone who's in the public view like myself shouldn't be this vulnerable, but I just don't agree. Um, you know, I share all of my ups with you guys, so it's only appropriate that I sometimes share the downs as well, but um, this past Sunday was my mother's birthday, and as much as I have affirmed that I am through the fire of the grieving process, um, I realize now that I am not. Um, I am an only child, and my mother's death was very, very hard on me because she was my best friend, and my mother died in my lap. And that is something that, you know, I'm grateful to have had the chance to say goodbye. But as her son, I still feel like I could have done more to keep her here. Now, I know that I'm not God and I don't have the cure for cancer, but it's just how I feel. I could have done more. Um, and a lot of people don't understand the daily hardship it is to be in this space because... You know, uh, I have several brothers and sisters, um, and they are all dead as well. Um, my biological father um, is also uh, deceased, um, so I'm by myself. Um, I don't have any family, and a lot of people have um, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, um, you know, etc. that they could go over on holidays or just go hang out with or call if something's wrong or help out or, you know, all of that. And um, I'm by myself, you know. I um, I don't have any family. I'm kind of alone. And that's not a woe is me. I'm not, you know, asking for pity about that. But that's a very, very difficult space um, to be in sometimes because – you know, sometimes you just want family, and I'm alone. Um, many people know that I have a stepfather, 
who has been in my life um, since I was five. Um, and I love him dearly. He is like a father to me. Um, and I don't talk about it often, but my dad, my stepdad, um, is in a coma. And he's been in a coma for going on eight or nine months now. Um, because he missed my mother so much, he drank himself into a coma. And he's not doing so well. Um, so on top of having to mourn my mom and mourning my mom makes me mourn my biological father and my brothers and sisters, I have began to mourn my stepfather as well because I know that, um, he doesn't have much longer. So that has been very, very difficult on me. And I don't speak about it often because I'm Blake and Everyone around me leans on me to have it together, to, you know, be the counselor, be the friend, be the manager, um, you know, do all the bookings, conduct all the rehearsals, book the photo shoots, you know, arrange travel, do the emails, get it all together, do it all. So I don't speak about these things often because I don't want to ever, ever let anybody down. Um, but this has been very, very difficult. For me internally and because I don't let my friends or my business friendships or those around me know and I don't have any family to really go through it with um, I just keep it within myself um, and it's just been hard um, in addition a few months ago God made some business transitions in my life and he removed some people from my space. And I know that that was for the best. Um, I would never question God. But the fact of the matter is that I'm still very hurt by it. Um, still very hurt by it. And when I love, I love hard. And my loyalty is deep. And when people are removed from my life, it hurts. And so, you know, I still have been grieving some of those situations and some of those people. Um, and I think the main part about it is, I'll be honest, for some people, um, good riddance, goodbye, deuces, I don't, I don't really give a fuck. Uh, see you later. Um, the problem is that those people that I'm glad that they're gone took some people with them that I actually cared a lot about. And some people that had been with me for many, 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 many years. And I felt like they were manipulated. And, you know, when someone is with you five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years, and they are manipulated by people or a person or whatever and they also depart you it kind of it it stinks let's just be honest it stings a little bit and it's hard to um stomach so i've also been um dealing with and mourning um some of those friendships and thus i have to be completely honest because of those situations I know that I have some amazing people around me who love and support me, but because of those situations, I'm always in the place of asking myself when these current people in my life, when are they next? So as much as I trust those around me, it's hard to fully trust and to not ask myself, when are they next? And so in turn, I've been backing away and um, giving myself a little bit less and, uh, just pulling back. So that way, if this happens again, I'm not as hurt as I was this last time. And I know that's unfair to my current friends. I know that, but I can't help but feel the way that I feel. 
and I hate being in a group setting and we're at rehearsal or we're at a show or we're at dinner or we're at a party and I'm around these great group of people, but I'll be honest, sometimes I look around and I ask myself, when are they next? So I've been dealing with that. Um, so I just, you know, it's been a little bit difficult. Also, um, everyone knows that I am moving um, tomorrow. So that's why it looks like I live in a homeless shelter behind me because I have no curtains and things up because I am moving tomorrow. And the moving process has been difficult. Um, finding a place that I really, really liked and I really, really love was astronomically hard. But I finally found a place that I love that I was scheduled to move into tomorrow. Well, yesterday, I got a call from that property to tell me that the unit was no longer available and that I could indeed not move in tomorrow and that they were really, really sorry about the mix-up um, and that they were going to just refund my money to me within 10 business days. Well, that sounds good, but... I move in 24 hours. Things are packed, movers are scheduled, and my lease is up in this place Saturday. And uh, so I have to be out of this place on Saturday. So I had to really start over in my apartment search, um, looking for an apartment, viewing it, applying, getting approved, paying, and all of that. And I only have 48 hours to do so. Uh, praise God that I found a place um, to move into tomorrow, and I'm very, very lucky about that. However, it's not the place that um, I wanted, and it's not in the neighborhood that I desire to be in. So I'm kind of mourning the place that I fell in love with, um, and that's just difficult. You know, I'm grateful um, that God has blessed me with another place, but... It just wasn't the place that I wanted to to be in. Um, also, going back to friendships a little bit, I think that I've been a little dissatisfied with friendships lately. And not because my friends are bad or they're, they're not amazing. They are great. Um, they're great. However... It's hard sometimes not having certain like-minded people around. And so what I mean by that is 98% of my friends are heterosexual. And of those 98, 70% of that 98 are men. So I hang around mostly straight guys. Um, and I love my friends. Um, and, you know... Um, they're amazing to me, but sometimes that gets hard. Um, and these are the times it gets hard when you are, you know, at a club with your friends and they are all um, partying and having fun and flirting with each other and buying each other drinks and, you know, dancing on each other and, you know, all of that. And you're the one lonely, not lonely, but you're that one soul gay guy in the room, that gets tough at times because it's awkward. And I know that my straight friends don't know that it's awkward um, because how would they? But it's extremely awkward sometimes. And when you're out to dinner and, you know, you're that one sole gay person, it gets awkward and uncomfortable and just sometimes weird. And... As of lately, I've been noticing that awkward feeling a lot more than usual. Um, and so, again, not to say that my friends aren't the shit, because they are. I love them. But sometimes, you know, when you're out with a group of your, your friends and uh, the bartender comes over and says to one of your, your girlfriends, you know, the guy at the bar wants to buy you a drink or... You know, one of your guy friends sees a girl across the room and goes and flirts, and now they're in each other's face for the rest of the night. And you're that one gay guy that has to be like, I'm in a straight atmosphere. I'm kind of just sitting here ordering drinks. It's difficult. 
and awkward and, you know, uncomfortable. And so I've kind of just been feeling that a lot more in my social situation. So I haven't been wanting to go out or um, be as social um, as I normally would. And lastly, um, business for me has been at its peak lately. I don't know, why do I have a knife? I was packing and ripping tape. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, But business for me has been dope lately. Absolutely amazing. Um, But with new heights comes new bullshit. That's just the reality. And I don't, I don't, you know, I hate using the word haters because I feel like that's such a stupid word. Um, But with new heights come new people who wish to oppose you and wish to try to see you fail. And a lot of times those around me don't even know about those things and situations because I don't make light of them. I don't talk about them, but they happen to me. Um, I was recently asked to produce a show for Nike and I'm really excited about it. I still have the job, but the reality of it is once I posted that I got the job, um, the client came back to me about a week later and showed me an email from another fashion show producer here in Chicago who emailed them a four page letter of why I shouldn't have the job and why I was the wrong choice and why um, I should be fired. Now, luckily, my client knows my work, knows my work ethic, but it was just fucked up. And I deal with that a lot. I deal with that a lot um, and more than I ever talk about. But it's just truly messed up sometimes. And... Learning how to deal with that on different levels sometimes is difficult because you deal with people who oppose you right here and then your business goes here and those same people then want to come here, but you're not used to dealing with them here. So you got to relearn how to communicate and how to be mature and how to be the bigger person and and not spaz out and, and, and all of that. And so sometimes that gets difficult. Um, and I'll be honest in my beginning of my career, you know, i I'm honest. I was always firm in saying I, I came up in fashion in New York city where it is rough and, and doggy dog and sometimes just me. And so I came into the business thinking that that's how you had to be to be successful. So in my beginning, um, stages in my beginning stages, um, I was a complete asshole. I was. And not on purpose, but I worked for people who were just that way. And so I assumed that's how you got to be to survive in this industry. Um, And so I was a little bit of a jerk. But over the last few years, I've truly, truly changed how I deal with people. But sometimes it's difficult to still be interacted to the person I was six or seven or five or four years ago. For example, I have a client that I'm currently working with. And yesterday she told me, you know, a few people came to me and asked me how it is working with you, Blake. And, you know, was I having a good experience and blah, 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 blah. And my client says she responded that working with me has been amazing. Working with me has been enjoyable, professional, and a good time. And she told them the Blake that you're talking about, I don't know that Blake. Um, And on one hand, it's difficult Because if you had an experience with me that wasn't pleasant, cool. I respect that. But why voice that to other people? There are many people that I have experiences with that are fucked up. But I don't ever spew that to the next person. That's me and your experience. And so your experience with the next person could be a little bit different. So on one hand, that was annoying. But on the other hand, it's frustrating because I feel that sometimes... And I've said this before, Chicago babies people. And I feel like when I am the person who demands you to be on time, who demands you to have professionalism, who demands you to come in, do your job, that's it, that's all, go home. 
that labels me an asshole. When in actuality, I'm just here for the work. I'm just here to do the job. And I feel like when you are in another production and they allow you to come in 45 minutes late and not be in dress code and be on your phone in rehearsal and chew gum and blah, 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 blah. And then you get to me and I'm like, no, spit out your gum, put the fucking phone down, come in on time or go home. Then I'm the asshole. When in actuality, I'm just trying to create a professional environment for everyone involved. So, you know, again, with new heights comes new bullshit. And business for me has been booming lately. And I'm appreciative. But again, with those new heights, sometimes comes new adventures. And you got to figure out how to deal with those. So, I don't want to hold you guys up for too long, but I just kind of wanted to um, tell you why I've been MIA, um, what I've been dealing with, and to, you know, say I'm okay, um, but in certain parts of life, I am struggling right now. Um, and I know that it's because God is setting me up for something super dope. Um, but I'm struggling with some things and I need to back away and figure those things out. And, you know, I'm the person that, um, gives, 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 gives. I give to everybody around me. And I didn't want to say this. Because I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But lately, for those that I give and give and give and give to, I've been feeling very unappreciated. And not taken advantage of, but taken advantage of a little bit. I felt unappreciated. People know that I would give my all to them, I'll give them my last dollar, I'll give them all of my time, I'll sacrifice everything to make another person happy. But for many people in my life that I do that for, I just haven't felt appreciated. I just haven't felt like, you know, Blake, we appreciate you and we thank you for all of the sacrifices and things that you do for us. So, because I have felt like that in turn when I got to this place of everything is boiling, I just said, you know, for the first time, I'm just going to do what's best for me. And I need to back up, do what's best for me, and uh, fuck who don't like it. And that's just the space that I've been in. So um, that's what it is. Um, that's why I've been in my A. I haven't answered anyone's calls. I haven't answered anyone's texts. Um, I shut down my Instagram. Um, didn't post on Facebook um, and all of that. There's why. But I am okay. Um, this video is not a video that I am back to normal because I'm not. I'm still going to take a few more days to do me and figure me out and all of that and prepare for this epic move tomorrow um but i just want to let people know that i'm okay i'm good um and be extremely transparent about the shit that i'm going through right now and so i believe that three people are gonna watch this video one my true friends and family who are gonna understand where i'm coming from in terms of my mom friendships business feeling unappreciated and all of that and they're going to respond to me in a positive, loving manner. There's going to be a second person who watches this video um, and takes my transparency um, to a negative space to either boast, laugh, criticize, roll their eyes. That's just life. There are some negative people out here who are unhappy with themselves. Um... And so I get it. Y'all need to make something out of nothing. So go for it. And then there's going to be a third person who watched this because they were bored eating a salsa. That's cool too. Um, but I believe there are three people 
um, that are watching this. So the person who watches this, who love me, that support me, hopefully you guys respond to me in a great manner and just know that I'm taking time for me. Um, to the second person, fuck you, bro. Uh, you're super unhappy with yourself, and that's cool. There's some of y'all out there. And to the third person, if you're watching this just because you're bored, share the food, bro. Um, but until I see y'all again, I love y'all.